So welcome to today's uh, podcast. If you're listening as a podcast and welcome to the video, if you're watching on YouTube, uh, I am really fortunate to have with me today, uh, Jennifer Filson. And Jennifer is a, uh, she's got kind of an amazing background. Her, her business is Rockstar Marketing and she's the owner of Rockstar Marketing. And uh, she's been serving the auto repair industry since 2009, but she's also a bona fide rock star. So uh, Jennifer, you want to tell us a little more about your background and how you got into marketing? Thank you, Ken. So yeah, it is kind of a fun little thing because how often do you find a, a, a middle-aged white woman from the suburbs um, claiming that she's a rock star, but I really am. So um, it all kind of started back in uh, 2007. At the time, the recession, the Great Recession was just starting. Uh, I was marketing director for a construction company and I was going through a divorce. So there was a lot going on in my life and I decided to take all of my feelings and write songs and create my first album. And uh, I knew that if I was going to dedicate all of this time and money into my music, I better have some kind of return on investment, right? So I, I was either, well, let's just show my friends and family what I'm capable of or let's try to take this commercial and make a profit off of it. So what would happen was, is that from 2007 to about 2011-ish, um, I would create two albums and music videos and, and try my best to get heard on radio stations across the world. And uh, I spent a lot of time on these brand new social media platforms called MySpace and Facebook and Twitter starting in 2007. Now at the same time, I'm also marketing director for a construction company and construction companies were holding their own in the beginning of the early recession or the great recession. But you know, by, by a certain point, all, a lot of construction had stopped. So I um, started my own business and I had been promoting their Mark, their uh, construction company on social media. And I decided, you know, this social media thing is a really big deal. It's going to be the future because I don't see the yellow pages standing up against social media. I don't see the newspapers standing up against social media and, you know, a lot of traditional uh, advertising back then. So I started Rockstar Marketing and it took a while, but we became a big success. And today, we are the top content marketing agency serving the auto repair industry, and we are now expanding into other industries here in 2021. Oh, well, very nice. Uh, I am kind of late to uh, using, the, I use the internet for a lot of things, but not for marketing until the last few years, but I, I am learning my way through it. So um, t tell me a little more about who you serve in life. Well, um, for professionally, um, I serve small businesses. I typically work with businesses that are somewhere near the $500,000 and growing um, gross revenue annually. They typically have a marketing budget. They, they often will have a business coach and they want to reach their next million. So they know that they are not necessarily the experts in marketing. They have a really good idea of what it is that they need, but they lack the time to do it. So I find that in the auto repair industry, I tend to serve the top 10% of the industry because those are the folks that are really like the champions of the industry. And we have a rock star squad. We have uh, five people working for me and it's a great group, very diverse group. And uh, I'm really proud of them. They're, they're, they're wonderful writers. So really, when you think about it, if you really boil down the essence of what is it that we do at Rockstar Marketing, we're storytellers. And we tell your story in such a way that uh, it's, it's a heartfelt way. And it's, it's customized and it's unique to you. Because the magic and secret sauce is we sit down for a two-hour interview with the owner of the business or owners of the business. And we, we find out what their why is and what makes them special and unique and who are they serving. And, you know, it's so fascinating, Kenneth, because I'm sure you've seen this in podcasts. You know, when people are talking about themselves, they tend to say the same things that everyone else says in the first like 45 minutes. But then after that, after they've kind of gotten out, you know, what, what everyone usually says, 
then they start opening up and they start talking about what really is meaningful to them. And that's the secret sauce of defining yourself against your competitors. It's really not a scarcity mentality of, oh, I have to beat them because we're all in the same space and I have to look different. It's more of an abundance mentality. This is what makes me unique. And because I am unique and because I really value these things, I attract the people that also value these things. And together we are a tribe and we serve each other. So there's a different flavor for every client, right? A, a business offers a different flavor and there's an there's a audience for it. It's just like going to, uh, to Baskin Robbins, right? The 31 flavors. Just because I prefer Jamocha doesn't necessarily mean that butter brickle is not good. It's just that I happen to like Jamocha. <laughs> You know, and it's interesting what you just said reminds me of uh, something I, I, I saw in a class once and it said your vibe attracts your tribe. Oh, yes, that's beautiful. Yes, your vibe attracts your tribe. That is so well put and it's so true. Yeah. Uh, so uh, tell me a little more about your why in, in, in why you started what you do. And, and, you know, I know you talked about your audience. Uh, what, what attracted you? Let me ask this question differently. What attracted you to the auto industry? How did you go from construction to auto industry? That's a really good question. I get asked that a lot because I am not uh, one to turn a wrench. So it's like, how? In fact, here's an even funnier story. You know, back when I was in high school, I grew up in Florida, Jacksonville, Florida area, uh, Orange Park. And uh, uh, I always hung out with I was dating the guy that was hanging out with all the auto repair guys. Like they were, they were all the auto shop guys. They were all into their cars. And, you know, back before the internet and, you know, in the 1980s, we were cruising, you know, just because there wasn't, there wasn't the internet. <laughs> there wasn't a whole lot else to do, right? <laughs> so you wanted to get in your car and go cruising. And um, I'm still friends with a couple of the guys from, from the high school group. And uh, one of which is a, a parts um, manager for a dealership, a BMW dealership in Jacksonville. And he, a few years ago, he's like, Jen, how did you, like, how did you, the one that hung out with all the, the, the grease monkeys, how did you get into the auto repair industry? Um, and I think that it really boils down to storytelling. You know, um, when I was creating my, my music, you know, you tell a story, you tell a full story in three minutes, right? Yeah. And when I launched Rockstar Marketing, I knew that that storytelling was going to serve me well. So I was here in Monterey at the Monterey Peninsula Chamber of Commerce, and I met my very first client who is still with me 11 years later. He's been with me ever since 2009. No, sorry, technically 2010, beginning of 2010. And, uh, uh, Robert Wiesenberg, he was like, can you, can you write a blog for my um, auto body shop, Robert's Collision and Repair? I'm like, okay. So I started doing that. And then his website agency, they didn't have writers, but they saw that I was writing these really great blogs. And what we did for his personality of his, of his shop, he's a very high end auto repair shop. And we are here on the Monterey Peninsula. So Pebble Beach, Carmel, Pacific Grove, Monterey. It's an affluent community. And so what we did was we, we pretended that the car was like a person. It was going to the spa. It was going to get a facial detailing. It was going to get a mani-pedi paint job, right? And the, the, you know, go, go to the spa and get hydrated, you know, fluid exchange, you know, so like, you know, all the different, you know, a new pair of shoes, tires, you know, so we had like the car be a person going to the spa. And it was so fun to write that. And, and this website agency is Energy Works. They said, ooh, you're pretty good. Can you, can you write for our other clients? And one thing led to another. And it's like it, all these auto repair shops from around the country. And then eventually, um, this Energy Works would fade out of the picture. But then a new, a new uh, marketing agency, uh, website agency, Kukui, would come in. And then they're like the dominant... Uh, website agency of the auto repair world and they serve the bulk of auto repair and they don't have writers and we have this beautiful symbiotic partnership and so we do a lot of writing for their clients and we we're we're, we're good partners and the beauty is too is that with everything that I do and with what every you know your vibe attracts your tribe mine is of service 
as a leader. So I'm a, I'm a servant leader and I love to do good for others. And so whenever I am working with a client or a, a partner or what have you, the goal is what is best for the client. And when we go toward what is best for the client, then it all just feels good because you know that we're doing right by them. And sometimes you, you give a little, you get a little, but really it's just this wave of abundance that you have all together because there's all those good feelings. And when you're, when you're, here's like a little marketing tip, you know, people are always looking at the return on investment. There's two kinds of ROI. There's tangible and intangible, right? Gary Vaynerchuk, talks about it, but in different ways, but the, the, there's the tangible is the hard numbers. How many subscribers do I have to my YouTube channel? How many sales did I make? How many copiers can I service? How many cars can I fix? Those kinds of things are the tangibles, but the intangibles are also important to marketing. That's the warm fuzzies, the trust that you're building, the community. And, and so I, I don't know if I really answered your question, because I, I just started talking about things that I loved, but you know, it's that level of service and, and bringing that story and bringing that love. And then it, I know that I do a good job because I help my clients reach their next million. Yeah. And, and, well, and, and it's really interesting because I resonate with a lot of things you say there. Um, and, and it's interesting because in the copy industry, uh, it's gotten into the state where everybody thinks they have to be the cheapest. And I tell people over and over again, I'm like, unless the buyer's driving a Yugo, <laughs> you don't have to be the cheapest. You just need to learn to tell your story and communicate the value you provide. And if you do that, then price becomes less of an object. But um, it, it, that, is a hard, that is a hard story to get people to listen to, though I, I've seen it over and over and over again. Yes, yes. In fact, your pricing should reflect the extra value and care you put into each service and warranty. Let's face it, in order to stand behind your work, if, if you have a warranty program like you do in the auto repair industry, and I'm assuming the copier industry, you can't focus on price because it's a race to the bottom. And then you're gonna be wondering, well, why can't I have a retirement? Why can't I feed my children? Well, it's because you were racing to the bottom. You need to raise your prices more often than not. And you know what? The people that love you will be happy to pay. Yeah. And, and, and I, I like the term you make because I, I think the challenge in the copier industry is everybody operates in a scarcity mentality. I got to get every client because somebody else will get them. And I'll, I'll, you know, and, and, and then, as you said, it's a race to the bottom. In fact, uh, uh, my standing joke is, is that pretty soon people are going to be paying double O nothing for copies. <laughs> You know, because that's right. that's where we're headed. Uh, you know, and, and to put it in perspective, when I started in the copy industry 30 years ago, uh, uh, on a per copy basis where I provided all the parts, labor, everything, people were paying about a penny four. Now they're down around three tenths of a cent. You know, so you look at how much difference in revenue. It, it's true. insane. Yeah, but anyway, we'll, we'll get off of that and go back to talking about you. I loved your term servant oh, it's, leadership. It's all good. I love this. <laughs> <laughs> I, I love the term servant leadership. And, and I, I told you, I, I teach service management. And that's one of the concepts I try to help uh, the, the new managers. Well, and they're not necessarily new, but they're their first time in training. You know, I try to help them understand that it's about, you know, you take care of your people, you treat them right, and, and everything else starts to fall into place. Yeah. Uh, um, you probably will, will like this statement too. And this is, a, I heard this in sales and I, and I use it a lot is, is people don't know how much, don't care how much, you know, until they know how much you care. Ooh, man, you are just, you're just whipping out all the quotes. That is, that is exceptional. And you're absolutely right. Um, you know, in the, I'll be honest, in the time of COVID, you know, there were, there were, Auto repair is a recession resistant industry. It doesn't mean that it's not affected by recession. Trust me, it is definitely affected. It was affected by COVID. And when, when COVID, here we are, you know, it's been a year. And when, when March of 2020 happened and people were like panicked and I got a lot of calls from a lot of my clients who said, Jen, I love you. 
I don't want to make this phone call, but I have five families I'm responsible for and I need to cut some of my expenses. I love you. I have to cut now, but I'll be back later. I'm like, okay, right? And those that did stay with me, we were all pooling our resources together. What happened was I would get these panicked calls. Oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. What do I do? What do I do? Help me, you're my marketer. I said, all right, here's what we're gonna do, everybody. If you come up with a good idea, I'm gonna put it in this one Google document. And if it's okay with everybody, I'm gonna share this with all 60 clients. Are you guys okay with that? And they're like, yes. And it was so cool because we pooled our resources and like one guy came up with this really great email of how to you know, tell their clients what was going on and how they were serving them. And so a lot of them were like, great email, I'll use that as the template. And then I was creating things and we gave away a lot of free stuff. We gave my husband, Renee, who has a background in commercial printing. You met him, Renee Ariola. Mm -hmm. He works for me as our graphic designer and video production. He's in charge of our Rockstar Media Division. And so we were giving away uh, videos about shops. We were, we were doing graphics. We were creating email campaigns. We were, we were just giving away a lot of stuff because we knew that if we did right by everybody, because we really deeply cared. We wanted them to succeed, that we would all pull through this together and together we're stronger. And it worked. And you know, what was really cool about it is that it actually was what gave birth to my book. See, over the 11 years of working as Rockstar Marketing, I've been telling everybody stories and there are just some wonderful champions. And, and I, I call, in fact, here, if you don't mind, I'm just gonna sure, show right. it off a little bit. The give to get principle. And it's available on Amazon. In fact, it's a it's an Amazon bestseller. Woo woo. <laughs> yep, marketing. It's all marketing. But uh, what it is is how relationships and reciprocity build, build raving fans. And what happened is, is that honestly, Kenneth, for like three years, I had their stories in my heart and I knew I needed to write a book about them. But it wasn't until COVID because what happened was I was living the give to get principle and I needed to be able to tell my own story in addition to their stories. So the cool thing is, is that um, I'm grateful for COVID because if it weren't for COVID, this little bestseller would not have been born. And I wrote this thing in 42 days, by the way, oh, yeah. only in 42 days because I already had the content. I had 11 years worth of, I could cherry pick my favorite stories, right? But the first half of the book talks about their secret sauce and what it is that they've done to create huge raving fans. And then the second half of the book is for those new to owning their business or new to being managers, exactly your, your client base who you help coach. How do you create raving fans? What are your superpowers? What is your why? What makes you special and unique? What is it that you love to do to serve? What is it that you can give? Is it a smile? It doesn't always have to be something that costs money. It could be homemade cookies that you bring into the shop and, and, and people walk into your lobby and they smell the cookies and you you start a conversation. It's little things. It's remembering that they went on vacation the last time you saw them and you asked how that vacation went. It's, it's just fun connecting with people. Yeah. And, and, and I agree so much with it. I'm, I was just getting ready. In fact, I have your book cover pulled up on, on my screen here so I could, could talk about your book and, and I will say kudos to you. I, I have a couple of books I'm working on. And I understand that that's a, a, a tremendous accomplishment to turn out a book in, in 42 days. <laughs> Thank you. Well, I do write for a living. I kind of have an advantage. Writing does not bother me. I'm, I'm cranking out content all the time. <laughs> well, and, 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 and I do that too. As I mentioned, you know, before we started the interview, I've done 40 plus articles. So writing is not a problem for me. Um, I, what I'm doing now with my class is as I teach each uh, session of the class, I'm writing a chapter tied in with that. So when I'm done, I'll have 28 chapters that will make the foundation of the first book on, on you know, uh, like a course type book on service management in the copier industry. Because there's not a lot of people that write. There's been one other book that I've ever seen written about service in the copier business. It was written by a, a lady that taught for the BTA and, and it was a collection of articles that she wrote. And, and she did a really good job. Her name was Renelle Ingram. And she was, for anybody that's, that's listening that's uh, in the copier business, you probably know Renelle. She was 
she was a legend and then she's is just recently retired at at at, at, at not a young age she, she she just couldn't she couldn't walk away there's something about the copyright industry you get in it and, and it's 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 kind of like this black pit you can't get out of but <laughs> Um, okay. Well, I, listen, I have really appreciated your time today, Jennifer. It has been a, a lot of fun talking to you. Um, for those that, that are interested, a uh, link to Jennifer's website will be in, in the description below. There'll be a link to her book on Amazon, so you can find it there quick and easy. Um, and uh, I would say this, if you have any questions, uh, you know, please feel free to put it in the comments because uh, I can get the questions to Jennifer. We'll get you answers if you're watching it on YouTube. Um, uh, we'll have, I, uh, you'll be able to find Jennifer's inform contact information on our website. So if you're uh, on the podcast and don't have any way to leave a comment, you can go ahead and reach out to Jennifer that way. And uh, for those, again, if you haven't already subscribed, please go ahead and hit like, subscribe, and hit the little bell icon. And thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.